Hey guys, subscribe for daily knife content. And if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for links to some great online retailers. There's also individual links for knives that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the brand new Artisan Cutlery Aryan. Very cool. I really hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. This is, as far as I understand, a collaboration with Cerberus Knives, which you guys, uh, you guys definitely should check them out on Instagram. Um, so that's really cool. Um, thank you so much to Artisan Cutlery for sending this in for review. I really appreciate that. And thanks so much to my generous patrons who are supporting me right now. You can find a link for my Patreon down in the description. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's go ahead and get a measurement of this guy. I'm going to tell you guys right now, I really like this. <laughs> I'm going to tell you guys how everything, you know, I'm going to give you guys all the information. Uh, it generally comes in one of my reviews, but I really like this. Um, this, by the way, <clears throat> at the time of this recording, this knife has not made it to retailers yet. You can pick it up on the Artisan Cutlery website right now. It's pretty expensive. I have no idea what the actual price is going to be or if it's going to change when it comes to retailers. There will be a link right down below where you can check that. In that, in that right now in my time, it says pre-order and you know the price is coming soon, right? So you can check that link if you want. I'll make some uh, comments on that later in the video here uh, in a little bit. Anyways, um, overall length of the Aryan coming in at about eight and a quarter. Blade length is coming in at about 3.6 and your cutting edge is coming in at exactly three and a half inches. Very cool. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1. Uh, and its little brother, the uh, rat number two. Now, because of the angle, it's looking very similar to the overall size of the rat one, but it is actually about a quarter and shorter. So keep that in mind. How about up against the Spyderco PM2 and the Spyderco Para 3? You can see there uh, about the same length overall as the Spyderco PM2 and longer than the Para 3. Uh, and then last but not least, we'll do the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ruder Hogue and its little brother, the uh, mini Griptilian. So you can see there it is definitely longer than the Ritter Hogue. Um, let's go ahead and uh, do a, a, a comparison here for carry profile. So thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. You can see here this knife is definitely no thicker than the Para 3. In fact, it's ever so slightly thinner. Should we turn the exposure up just a little bit? I'm getting some maybe unnecessary shadows in there. There we go. Um, but yeah, it's not uh, it's not a thick knife, not by any stretch of the imagination. Let's go ahead and do height and length up against the PM2 and Para 3. So you can see here, this is not a tall blade, not at all. And obviously there's no flipper tab, though. Honestly, it could, I think it, it might translate well as a flipper, but in this case, it, it doesn't have a flipper tab. Um, yeah, length close to the Para 3, longer than the, uh, I'm sorry, close to the PM2, longer than the Para 3, nowhere near as tall as the PM2 or Para 3. We are looking at uh, micarta, they call this like a coral micarta. It also comes in like a dark, I think like a forest green micarta, which this looks incredible, but I think I personally might like the um, uh, the uh, green micarta. And then it is a titanium frame lock. We are, uh, let me get my flashlight, sorry, it's underneath a whole bunch of stuff here. You can get my flashlight down in the description. Inside, you can see it's solid micarta on one side and titanium on the other. That's going to help with weight reduction. Blade stock thickness on this guy. We'll measure it here real quick. Definitely not a super thick blade, which is great because it definitely translates to a nice edge, which we will all also talk about here shortly. A hundred and between 120 and 125 thousandths, which is about what I'd guess. Weight on this guy. Uh, Arian is coming in at. Wow, 3.53 ounces. That's great. If you're big into, you know, the ratio of uh, the blade to, you know, cutting edge to weight ratio or blade to weight ratio, this is right on the money. In any case, three and a half ounces is three and a half ounces. It's not a lot of weight. This is great. If you can legally carry something like this in your area, you'll find that it actually is very comfortable to carry um, both, you know, dimensionally and in terms of the weight. It's just great. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check on this guy. Doing things out of order today for whatever reason. Um, as per usual, my tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them down in the um, description if you want to pick them up. What is going on today? T8. So we have T8 for the pivot, and I'm not going to check the body screws. They are T6. Focus, camera. Uh, it's like I always say. It's fine. It's not a deal breaker. I wish they were larger. No big deal. Just be careful when you're disassembling it. Okay. Uh, I think that's it. I think we can move on now um, and talk about... 
this amazing knife. <laughs> I really like how this knife looks. I mean, as is usually the case when you're choosing a knife, aesthetics are the initial attraction to it, right? If it looks good to you, you're probably going to pay more attention to it. This immediately caught my eye the very first time that I that I saw it on Instagram. By the way, speaking of Instagram, make sure you follow uh, Artists and Cutlery as well. This caught my eye immediately, and I talked with Russell. If you guys remember that Knife Guy episode a while back, he showed this off to me. That was the first time I saw it kind of in hand and in action. And I, I said in the interview with him, I was like, man, that looks awesome. I just love the profile of it. I love the, you know, the fact that it's got that little opening slot there. It looks like you can easily do you know, you can open it however you want. And Russell, 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 Russell proceeded to open it with every single, he used his, let's see if I can do it. I want to, if, if, if he's watching this right now, he's probably laughing. Okay. So there's the index finger flip. Obviously I can do the middle finger flip. Let's try the third finger. I got my, my finger in the way. I can do it with that. And can I do it with my pinky? Russell literally did it with his pinky. Ah, my fingers get in the way. How could I, can I tuck it back and still hold on to it? How did he do this anyways? Well, my point here is that it is perfectly placed. Um, it is also nicely knocked down in there, so it's very comfortable. You also don't have to do any of that. You can actually do it with uh, your thumb or you can wheel it out. Truthfully, the easiest ways to open this are pinch opening it, wheeling out, or my personal preference is to just reverse flick it. Yes, fidget factor, yes. Deployment, yes, it's excellent. The action is excellent. It's very smooth. It's essentially fall shut, but it's a nice controlled fall shut. Boy, the action's good on this. The balance and the weight of the blade in relationship to the detent strength, which is click. Oh, it's just, this is, this is nice. This is nicely done. Uh, the design from Cerberus Knives executed very well. This is an awesome, this is a perfect example of a good design that translates really well uh, when it's, you know, being made by a company who's, you know, got really great fit and finish and tolerances and all. I mean, it's just, this is awesome. I really, really like this. The The action is fantastic. It's running on bearings, obviously. Um, I think one of the biggest things here, you know, if the if the aesthetic doesn't do it for you, if you love the aesthetic and you, you know, lo love the idea of the deployment, right, then you're really going to love this. But if the aesthetic doesn't do it for you, I will make a case for the deployment. This is very fun to manipulate and it's very easy to manipulate in a lot of ways. It kind of does remind me of the shaman. And it's obviously not a ripoff. There's a t <laughs> the only similarities here are the length and kind of the shape of the blade, right? But I mean, if we're going to say that this is a, right, I'm, I'm sure somebody will think that's a shaman rip on. But if we're going to say that, then you'd have to, there's like thousands of knives out there that have a similar blade shape, right? That you'd have to say the same thing. So that's not the case here, obviously. But that, uh, that little opening slot, it works just as well. And it kind of gives you some freedom to kind of put your finger where you want. If you, depending on your hand size or how you like to grip these things, if you want to, I, I kind of put it way down there, right? But if you want to put it up here, that's fine. Or if you don't want to do any of that, then it's just, it's easy to open like this. This is great. Um, I, I really like that. It might cause a little bit of a problem while you're wearing gloves, but probably not too bad. I would imagine you can still get in there. Really like this. I will say again, it probably could work as a flipper, right? We've got a million titanium frame lock flippers out there, right? So do we? does it need to be? No, it doesn't necessarily need to be. It's going to be preference. But I could imagine it, just to make that point, I could imagine it with a flipper tab. The scales have very slight contouring to them. It's almost something that you can't notice, but it is present. Uh, all these edges, of course, nicely knocked down. It seems like that's generally the case. It's, it's one of those things where I, every time I say it, I'm like, just like almost every knife nowadays, like it's the edges are properly chamfered. But every now and then I come across something that's like needlessly sharp. So I still feel like I should point it out. There are not a lot of lines on this knife that's, there's, there's no, I always talk about like, I love ergonomic freedom. I do not like to be forced to put my hands in any one specific spot, right? This definitely has that. In fact, it's so straight that there's not really a lock in point. I'm not going to tell you guys, I feel like I can slip off this, but if you, you know, have found that, you know, knives with similar handle profiles, if you found that it's, they can be hard to hang on to, I don't know, maybe you'll, truthfully, the traction that I'm getting and, you know, just choking way up here, right up against this area right here, I feel really comfortable. I, I, I honestly don't feel like I'm going to slip off of this thing, but it's worth pointing out. There are no specific lines to lock you in and there's not a lot of texturing, but even though this micarta is smooth, it's still got a little, you guys kind of know what I'm talking about. Micarta seems to have a little more traction to it. 
um, than like, you know, a polished carbon fiber or something like that. Um, here's an interesting little detail. The titanium actually, uh, actually has little teeny tiny like milling lines in it. And in some, when you, like when you turn it this way, it's hard to see, but if you turn it this way, you can, you can kind of see it. That doesn't, you can kind of hear it. You can kind of hear it, but it doesn't offer any real traction, but it is nice to look at. They could have totally left that bare and they didn't, right? I think that's cool. I like seeing little details like that in knives and it's just something that I appreciated. Um, speaking of uh, ergonomic comfort, I mean, the, let me emphasize this. This is very, very comfortable and the jimping extends out to the appropriate spot and it does provide traction. So I think especially if you've got your thumb up on the jimping, it does lock you in pretty well. The pocket clip is that very basic style of popsicle stick, right? That bothers me on some designs, especially like designs where, you know, if the if the profile is all, you know, kind of has this wavy, this or that, right? And it's got this unique thing going on, has all these unique characteristics. And then you turn it over and pfft, there's a weird little popsicle cl uh, clip. It bothers me on knives like that. But on this, the whole thing is straight lines for the most part. I mean, you have some curvature in the edge, but the the you know, the, the whole design is pretty straight and, you know, aesthetically simple, right? I mean, in terms of like the small details, there are great little complexities that you have to look for, right? Little design elements that make a lot of sense when you've got it in hand, right? But in terms of the aesthetic, yeah, it is a simple, straightforward aesthetic. So I think the pocket clip works well. It's flat and it's nicely rounded off at the end. So it does not create a hot spot. It's very comfortable to hold. Um, you do have an adjustment uh, head on each side. I turned this a little bit and it did not seem to free spin. So it's either tight enough that it's not going to do that, at least on this one, or it is actually captive. Either way, it was easy to adjust. Uh, we have a satin finished blade here and the flat uh, you can see up here and then uh, the satin or the, the grind lines here on the um, uh, the bevel, it drops down to the cutting edge and you can see the lines uh, go horizontal this way. Um, looks nice. I don't, I don't mind it. I've, I've always preferred a tumbled finish over satin finish, but that is a preference thing. Generally, my complaint is that with satin finishes, it tends to be a little bit sharp here. Not until this final area right here, which is not a normal place where your hand's going to come in contact and that's really all it is. It's just, oh, it doesn't feel good with my hands, right? So it's kind of a silly complaint. This is fine. I'm going to wipe this off because I have my gross fingerprints all over it and nobody wants to see that during a knife review. But yeah, the blade is very handsome. What's the blade steel on this guy? We are looking at S35VN. So in the past, I've complained about um, codes and things with Artisan Keller, and I still don't like to see serial number 1843G, right? Uh, I like to see the, the steel, stamp is uh, steel stamp is fine. I will, I, I, you know, these are made in China, if you don't know. But Artisan Cullery has exceptionally high. This is not the same thing as a Junker gas station knife that says made in China and you can get for, you know, 15 bucks at the Home Depot checkout counter, right? Uh, no, not the same thing at all. This is excellent. The materials are excellent. The quality and fit and finish is excellent, right? So a different, different caliber here. They have at least made it much smaller <laughs> than on previous knives. I still don't like to see it and I don't like to see this. The Cerberus logo doesn't uh, bother me at all. And that is the, uh, the Cerberus knives logo right there. It's pretty cool. It's kind of like a, I guess I like a, uh, maybe a, not a bulldog, but I don't know if it's like a Doberman or if it's, um, whatever. It doesn't really matter what type of dog it is. I like the logo. Um, and then you can see the artisan cutlery, uh, logo on the front, which is fine. The only branding that I don't like is back here where it says artisan cutlery on the backspacer. Some people might think that's fine. Other people, you may not like that. Like me, I don't really think that it needs to be there, but it's also not hurting anything. So whatever. Um, the uh, little, uh, the area, the lanyard bar back here um, for the, the lanyard is fine. That's a great way to do that. Aesthetically, here and here, it's out of the way. You can only see it when you turn this way, and it's not in the way of anything. It's a great way to do that. And then, you, you know, it frees up this area to make sure that the pocket clip is in an optimal position, which it absolutely is. Um, and it's also fixed. The screw that's holding it in is actually underneath. It's probably underneath where uh, the backspacer goes in. Um, and I would guess that it's flat, so it all fits together. And that's that's great. I mean, it looks great. And the amount of knife that's going to be hanging out of your pocket is literally this. That's it. So that's fine. Um, the uh, This is a titanium frame lock. It does have a lock bar insert that doubles as the over travel stops. So you're not going to be pushing that over. Um, and uh, you can see here the lockup is appropriate. The geometry looks good. We're locking up at 
35 to 40 percent probably sometimes the best way to tell is to look at the tang yeah 40 maybe 45 percent that's still definitely appropriate anywhere from about 20 percent to 50 percent is appropriate on a brand new knife if you're wondering what i think um we do have we actually don't have shouldering back here but that's okay it's it's just flat where it contacts the uh stop pin that's all right it doesn't have to be shouldered no blade play no blade play at all up down left or right smooth disengagement and there's plenty of access to that lock bar thanks to some cutouts right there that's nice that's a little detail that um i i see is missed sometimes on certain designs but they they give you um plenty of room to get in there because it's pretty thin right there's not a lot of space to get in there but it's the space is made larger by those little cutouts. No matter how far that lock bar wears over, which is probably not going to be very far, um, you'll always have enough space to get your thumb in there at least a little bit, right? Centering on this guy, absolutely dead perfect. Boy, there's really not a whole lot to complain about here, guys. I mean, limitations, again, it's going to be blade length. For some people, the overall blade length is not going to work. It's just not going to be legal, right? Not a lot. I mean, it, enormous ergonomic freedom. I mean, you really can move around on this thing and get really comfortable. It is very, very comfortable. Not a lot of lock-in, but it's also not very slippery. I think if this was full titanium, um, which I actually mentioned, I was like, man, that'd be cool if there was like a full tie one. And I think he mentioned there was a prototype somewhere that was all titanium. That's just me liking knives that are all titanium, right? Um, if it was full titanium, it would not only be heavier, but it probably would be a little bit more slick. So there is a little bit of traction added by the fact that this is micarta. And I think it looks great. I really don't have a problem with it. T6 screws. Okay, T6 screws, right? But other than that, I can't, I can't find fault with this. One thing we didn't talk about is the cutting geometry. Oh my goodness. This is very thin. Very thin. Wonderful cutting geometry. It does, seriously, you can see here. It does. There's there's a decent amount of you know durability kept out to the tip, but it really does get nice and thin down behind the edge. Now this isn't. I'm not talking about open L geometry, but continuous cutting over time. It's going to be very comfortable, very easy to use. It's going to slice. It's excellent. Best parts about this knife, the overall look. I love the look of it. Um, the materials are fantastic. Right. Um, ease of manipulation. It's very easy to deploy and it's actually a joy. You can do this all day. Your hand, the muscles in your hand will fatigue and retire before they become uncomfortable from little areas that, you know, bug people on other designs, right? Sharp corners or just unnecessarily heavy detent in the relationship with the, uh, the opening mechanism or whatever. A lot of this is all going to come down to preference, but that's largely the case with all of my reviews. This knife just factually syncs up with a lot of preferences that I have. Will it cut like most other knives? Yes, right? That's, I mean, the base thing with knives, but just little things that I like to see on knives are all here. So if you think like me, you'll probably love this knife. You'll probably love it, right? Let's say... Artisan Cutlery's price on their website is 266 bucks. Now, before you get bent out of shape about that, I don't know if the price is going to change when it actually comes to retailers. I can't tell you, yeah, it's definitely going to. But if the price stayed at 266 by the time, the link down below will take you to Blade HQ. If this pops up for 266 bucks, bucks on that Blade HQ, I'm thinking that's too high, right? Um, what What's the price that I... I mean, if I was going to take a shot in the dark, and that's all it is at this point, is a shot in the dark, I think a more appropriate for, uh, price for this knife is probably between 180 and 200 If it ends up being 225 maybe I'd choke it down, but that's kind of what I'm feeling. I'm not telling you guys that's definitely going to be the case, and that I definitely would not recommend it if it was above that price. I'm just saying 266 felt a little bit high. As far as the design goes, fit and finish, the materials, all that stuff, I think this is a huge winner. This is something I brought up to Cerberus Knives, and he was obviously way ahead of me. I said, this is great. This would obviously be a massive home run if you did, uh, if you guys did a budget version of this. Maybe something that was micarta on both sides and a countersunk uh, steel uh, liner lock, and then you did like AR RPM 9 for the steel and made it, you know, that's probably going to translate to a maybe a $70 knife knife. I don't really know. That's, a, that's just in my head. That's just what I think, right? That based on the other knives that I've handled from Artisan Cutlery and, and it, their competitors, um, that would be a massive home run too. 
Um, but this is as it sits. This is, in my opinion, this is a home run. This is an excellent knife, right? I mean, it's largely more of what we've seen from the knife world. S35VN, titanium frame lock, and it's running on bearings. But, gosh, the design is good. It's really, really great. Um, I would be paying attention um, and, uh, you know, watching for when it's going to drop at retailers. Maybe by the time this video uploads, it'll actually be at retailers, right? But just calling it how I see it right now, I think this is great. I hope the price doesn't stay at 266. Something tells me that it won't, but I don't know that. I don't have factual information. Just giving you guys my thoughts on this as it sits right now. This is great. Um, I Without it actually being at retailers right now, it's hard for me to say, yeah, recommendable, but I'm going to go ahead and put it in that playlist um, because I, I feel like it, that's it's going to end up being the case. This is a recommendable knife. Uh, the design, especially this is, this is very excellent. Um, to everybody and to artisan cutlery, uh, this is my favorite design that artisan cutlery has ever come out with. This is my favorite. I love this. This is really great. I hope this information was useful for you guys. It's weird reviewing a knife before it actually is at retailers, but some people do have this. Um, and the people that I've talked with seem to really be enjoying it. That's going to be pretty much it for today, guys. Uh, be sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.